Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus continues speaking with his disciples and those gathered around him. As he says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and for his leader. For I was angry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them. Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these you did not do it to me and these will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life the gospel of our savior praise to you O christ it's a little challenging doing that screen and stand up sit down but we're making it work Best to start my sermon at the top rather than at the end. The man was standing on his car, shouting at anyone who came near. He was screaming obscenities and threats, creating a tense situation for the neighbors. George had seen this man as he drove out of the neighborhood on an errand. While away, he received three phone calls from neighbors concerned about this stranger's presence. When George returned, he pulled his vehicle near the distraught man and slowly, calmly approached him. Looking into agitated eyes, George saw this man's fear his disorientation and disconnection with the world. As George spoke in a gentle voice, the angst of this other human being dissipated. Shortly thereafter, the distressed man was more peaceful and drove away. Lurking beneath the pain, George saw Jesus. While George is not affiliated with any worshiping community, he has attuned his vision towards seeing Christ in the lives of those he meets. A major emphasis of Jesus' mission and ministry was to acknowledge and care for those on the margins. Spending time with Jesus provided keen examples of how he nurtured the poor, sick, and oppressed. Could it be that Jesus assumed his followers would intrinsically know how to care for one another and those on the edges of society. Perhaps. We hear how he praises one group for the way they met the needs of those who are hungry, 
thirsty, houseless, cold, sick, or in prison. They are confused by this acclamation as they did not recognize Jesus in those they served. Curiously, the other group who did not serve others also did not recognize service to one as service to Jesus. Neither saw Jesus in the face of those they met. In 1925, Pope Pius XI had a growing concern for folks' inability to recognize the presence of Jesus. Remembering the 1918 viral pandemic, observing the rise and power of Benito Mussolini in Italy while Hitler was gaining strength in, music, in Munich, witnessing the brutalities toward Japanese cotton workers seeking more equitable wages as the largest fraternal organization in the US, the Ku Klux Klan, marched on Washington. Pope Pius saw this heavy stuff happening in the world and longed for a different focus. To steer people away from consumerism, nationalism, secularism, and new forms of injustice, he yearned for a new beginning. For all these reasons, Pope Pius XI instituted Christ the King Sunday into the liturgical calendar. He envisioned a focus on the King of Peace who came to reconcile all things, who came to serve and not be served. He urged believers to pause at the end of the church year to refocus on Christ. It is interesting to note how nearly 100 years later, many aspects of Pope Pius's vision did not seem to work. The similarities between 2020 and 1925 are striking. Would changing our language from Christ the King Sunday to Christ Centered Sunday refocus our story? It might take some time for the idea to catch. Last month, many celebrated Indigenous Peoples Day while some questioned why we did not recognize Christopher Columbus. The changing narrative acknowledges that tribal nations were present long before Columbus sailed the ocean blue and moves away from a narrative rooted in power and privilege. Along with Indigenous Peoples Day, Transgender Awareness Week is another example of how we have be <coughs> excuse me. Is an Along with Indigenous Peoples Day, Transgender Awareness Week is another example of how we have begun to decenter the voices of our dominant culture. Notice how our own narrative might change if we try to decenter ourselves and invite non-dominant voices into our conversation. While these shifts might not be obvious to an untrained eye, they are rooted in discipleship. Both Augustine and Luther saw humanity being curved inward and being turned inward on they stress the importance of renunciation of sins and refocusing our lives on God. I was invited to participate in a 100 day retreat, St. Ender retreat this fall. And as that first memo came from um, Sister Mary Margaret, she said, the work we are doing will be challenging and the hardest part is the longevity of staying with it the day in the day out invitation we slowly explored the four renunciations of john cashin an early christian mystic each 
renunciation encouraged decentering our own thoughts and afflictions so we could recenter our lives on Christ. At the core of this retreat was the prayer of St. Patrick. We were encouraged to memorize it as a gentle reminder of how Christ is the center of our lives. Listen to the last stanzas and imagine them as encouragement to see Christ in the other. Christ in the heart of every person who thinks of me. Christ in the mouth of every person who speaks of me. Christ in the eye of everyone who sees me. Christ in the ear of everyone who hears me. Notice how our own narrative changes when we decenter ourselves and invite these non dominant voices into conversation. Lodged in my memory is the grateful yet awkward response of a Hispanic family when I delivered a traditional Thanksgiving food basket. They were confused on how to prepare a turkey and not quite sure what to do with instant potatoes and canned cream corn. While recognizing we had tried to provide what they needed, we discerned that their traditional foods were different. And so for Christmas, we provided what they wanted, large bags of rice and mesa. As Jesus shares his final parable before being arrested, he is urging us to see him in the face of those we meet. When our focus is turned inward and fed on consumption, power, and systemic status quo, we are incapable of seeing the possibilities Jesus saw with his eyes. As we shift our gaze, we no longer see a man screaming obscenities on the top of his car. We see a hurting sibling in Christ longing to be known and loved. 